Welcome back to another message from the Little Church World. I pray that you've had a great week. And we're actually really excited that you've joined us today because this is the launch of our next series, Breaking Free. I urge you to spend the next 20 or so minutes with us as we learn just exactly what it is that we're breaking free from and how to do so. Have you ever felt stuck? Have you ever felt like you are trying so hard to get out of a slump or to break free from the same issues that seem to continue to appear? This concept of being stuck is not unusual. It is more common than it should be, and it happens to all of us. You can try and focus on progress or self-development, but inevitably, the issues seem to come right back. You're facing the same things consistently as if you're just going in circles. As much progress as you make, you never feel like you're reaching your goals. In fact, it almost feels like there is a repeating cycle that's out of your control, or as if there is someone or something who is behind the scenes and is out to get you to make your life difficult. I imagine that this is what Israel must have felt like after being told by God that they would reach the promised land. But before they did, they spent 40 years wandering through the wilderness and the desert. The truth is, this is not out of our control, not entirely. There is an element which is not of our own efforts, which we will discuss later, but there is also something that we can and need to do to overcome this cycle, or in other words, to break free. So, why is all of this important and how is it relevant? Well. Having just finished our series on tough times, and amongst other things, learning about the ordering of your soul with facts, faith, and feeling, let us explore the idea of breaking free. Because we all go through tough times, and these tough times can be caused by circumstances, by other people, and even sometimes ourselves. As we begin this next series of breaking free, let me propose an idea to you. First, however, let me say that I am not speaking from a position of condemnation, nor one of belittling. I am speaking from a position of revelation, and this is a humble position, for I am also included in all that is going to be said. So, how do you break free of this cycle? This message will primarily deal with the idea of breaking free, and what we must do in order to successfully break free. There are several aspects to breaking free which will be discussed more specifically in subsequent messages. Today, however, we will talk about three necessary ingredients to break free. Before we go over these ingredients, I wanted to talk a little bit about who can break free, because it is very important to understand how this process comes about and who is capable of successfully breaking free. Now, I am sure that this sounds a bit strange, or perhaps even exclusive, but I assure you that the source of this freedom is open to all of us. In fact, many of you, Christian or not, could probably quote John 3.16, which discusses the love and inclusiveness of God, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. This conveys the deep love that God has for us. And part of what it means to be a Christian is to understand the proper order of creation. What this means is that we see and acknowledge the true nature of mankind as incomplete beings, the Bible uses the word fallen. In contrast, God is a complete being, for from God all things flow. He is the creator of the universe, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. But there is more. If you don't have children, imagine for a minute that you do, and imagine that they are constantly doing what you tell them not to do. Now, I would wager that many of you would not give your children instructions simply because you enjoy telling them what to do, or because their obedience pleases you. Rather, I imagine that you would only tell them to do or not to do things because you think that it is in their best interest. After all, you have years more experience in this world than they do, and with this in mind, it would seem silly for your child not to listen to you. Furthermore, your child's disobedience would seem unwarranted because you are their parent, you provide for them, and you invest in them. And yet, they continue to disobey you. 
Some would say that this disobedience is simply part of what it means to be a child. You may have heard one of these explanations before. It's part of being a kid, or they're just being kids. In fact, this must be how God sees us. He created us, has infinitely more experience and wisdom than us, and invests so much in us, yet we continually disobey Him and even mock His existence. As children, we may do what our parents tell us not to. For example, if we play with a fire after being told not to do, and then we get burned, is it our parents' fault that we got burned, or our own? If we then continue to get burned by fire when we touch it, is it our parents' fault, or our own? My point is that we often blame God for our circumstances and our tough times when they can sometimes be avoided, or at least can be overcome from our own doing. This is not to say that God is not involved, but it's a lot like being a parent. And as a parent, you are raising your child to have particular characteristics and traits. For example, you may want your child to have integrity, to be caring and kind, to be thoughtful and passionate. God also has characteristics that He wants us to have. The difference is that He knows exactly what is best for us. It is all outlined within the Bible for our benefit and referred to as the fruits of the Spirit. So what does all of this have to do with breaking free of gripping cycles and lifestyles? As mentioned earlier, there are three primary ingredients. The first is to cast off guilt. Guilt plays a massive role in digging holes for us to lie in. The Bible says a lot about guilt, most of which speaks of how unnecessary it is to have guilt. Now, of course, this is not to say that we should be void of any remorse for our wrongdoing. But this suggests that through Christ, we are cleansed and made new. It is through this process of renewal that, to quote Romans 5.1, we have peace with God. After all, this is the aim of breaking free. As much as breaking free from vicious and damaging cycles is about overcoming and avoiding these awful and painful circumstances and issues, it is even more about obtaining peace. Furthermore, Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, says in chapter 3, verse 13, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, and straining forward to what lies ahead. This is central to understanding the peace found in Christ. In order for the blood of Christ to cleanse us, we must move forward. This is also central to the process of breaking free. In order to break free from the cycle, we must move forward, strain forward, as Paul says. But it is not simply the desire to move forward that gets us there. In fact, is also not just any act of forward motion, for we must truly move forward and not just sideways. Let us revisit the example of the child and the fire. If the child stops touching the fire so that he doesn't get burned, but instead begins touching a heated pan or boiling water or a light bulb and expects not to get burned, then the child is not straining forward. The analogy is a bit packed so let's deconstruct it. The child is merely moving sideways. He's not actually changing. He's only changing his method and not his purpose. We are like children. And our attempts at navigating this world are often led by our, our own will, desires, and planning. And when one thing fails, we try again, but often without reevaluating our own perspectives or altering our purpose. We often only alter our manner or our method. That is, we often only alter our external conditions and not ourselves. This is very important because it is only when we recognize that we have a part to play that we can begin to move forward. After reading through Paul's letters in the New Testament, you will find many references to his own self-proclaimed flaws and brokenness. This is not because Paul wants pity or because he's trying to manipulate his readers. These are honest self-assessments that Paul makes of himself. It is this humbling perspective which keeps him returning to Christ for his peace and not to himself. This is also where guilt comes in. 
When we recognize our true selves and what role we have to play in our own circumstances and cycles, we are open to falling victim to self-pity and to guilt. This guilt, perhaps a genuine feeling of remorse and sorrow, can hold us back from growth and from peace. We are told by Paul to strain forward. Guilt is a mechanism which holds us back. This is not to suggest we avoid guilt, but we, to, we need to understand its proper role, as it's bringing us to Christ and not to ourselves. The first ingredient to breaking free, then, is to cast off guilt, to put away the sorrow that burdens us from our past and to look forward and move forward. Now, let's move on to the second ingredient in breaking free. Earlier, I said that there was an element to these cycles which is out of our control and that we would discuss it later. This element is the enemy, otherwise known as Satan. The devil, Satan, wants to keep us from God. We are told that he walks around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour, and that he comes only to kill, to steal, and destroy. More than this, the enemy does not do so boldly and brightly. In other words, the wiles of the serpent are hidden and deceptive. Like the intricate workings of an orchestra, the overtures of the enemy are woven into our lives. And when we are feeling stuck or incapable of moving forward, or when we feel helpless because we keep arriving at the same conclusion and the same results one attempt after another, it is without a doubt that the enemy has much to do with these feelings. To be honest, the promise being discussed in this message about breaking free has less to do with our overcoming physical circumstances than it does with the internal state of our being. The peace that Paul describes is what we seek. The goal is not simply to survive this life until our dying breath, but to live our lives so joyously that no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, this is the promise discussed here. This is the process of breaking free, finding the peace of God, and maintaining it in all ways at all times. The enemy wants nothing more than for you to believe your own incompetence or uselessness. Although I did say earlier that to be a Christian is to acknowledge the brokenness of mankind, this acknowledgement is not a condemnation or a judgment. It is simply a recognition because without it, we are held in the glass towers of our pride until they come crashing to the ground, which inevitably they will. I'm sure you've heard the saying, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. The second ingredient of breaking free then is to acknowledge the enemy and to recognize his attempts to keep you down, to make you believe false truths about yourself, your surroundings, and your relationship with God. In recognizing this as the work of the devil, we can put these ideas in their proper place and no longer see them as true, but as poor attempts to keep us from joy, peace, and a relationship with God. The third ingredient to breaking free is to believe God's promises. So far we've had casting off guilt, fighting the enemy, and now believing the promises. Believing the promises is exactly what it sounds like. The final ingredient to breaking free from these gripping cycles is to believe the promises that God has made to us. Once we have recognized our own role in our situation and that of the enemy, we have to look to God. He has promised us so much, particularly salvation. Now, he does not offer a life void of temptation or even of suffering, but he does offer a peace that allows us to withstand this suffering and to withstand difficulty and even to break free of the cycles that seem to appear and keep us down at every turn. These promises of His are innumerable. A few, though, are eternal life, forgiveness, the power of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, peace, and protection. For the purposes of today's message, I am going to th highlight forgiveness, the power of the Holy Spirit, and peace. Forgiveness is a powerful promise when it comes from the Creator of the universe. No matter what you have done or who you have been in your past, years, months, weeks, days, or even minutes ago, God is willing to forgive you. He has promised in 1 John 1, 9 that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive. 
We are also told in Psalm 103.12 that as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. We are not without forgiveness. This is a promise to believe and trust in when we are feeling guilty and the weight of our past is pushing down on us. He also promises the help of the Holy Spirit. One of the powers of this promise lies in a passage found in Romans chapter 8, verses 5 to 6, which reads, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. In this passage, we are told how to find peace, which is to set the mind on the Spirit. Further, the Spirit intercedes for us. It is our connection to God. The third promise, then, to achieve peace is attainable through the Holy Spirit. God not only came and died to give us eternal life with Him in heaven, but He has also provided us with peace here on earth. This is what it means to break free to attain the inner peace that is only truly available from God. Through Him, no matter where we find ourselves in life, we can be joyous and at peace despite what lies in front of us. If you would like to begin this process of breaking free, then reach out to a Christian friend or family member and ask them to pray with you and to help guide you through this process. Spend some time speaking to God and accept the truth of Christ's resurrection. If you do not have someone in your life with whom you can speak, please feel free to contact me by emailing goodnews at thelittlechurchworld.org and I will be more than happy to connect with you. And I pray that you have a fantastic week and I encourage you to visit our site in the weeks to come for the rest of the Breaking Free series from The Little Church World. Well, this concludes our first message from the Breaking Free series. I really hope that you've found some truth in this message and something that you can apply to your life. I urge you to spend some time this next week in prayer and seeking God with fellow Christian friends and family members on what it means to break free for you. I would also suggest that you come back for the next few messages as we will go into more detail on what it is to break free, how we do so, and what it is that we are getting from God in this process. So until next week, have a great week and bless you.